Good morning to you. Hope everything's going well. And, uh, as you join us here today, grab your Bible and let's turn to the 30th Psalm. Be starting starting in this Psalm of day. Great Psalm, um, great Psalm of praise, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this Psalm. It's a great example uh, for us. One of the stories. Uh, but uh, share with you real quick about this psalm. John Phillips uh, shares uh, this story in his um, commentary uh, about a circumstance, a situation that happened in Holland uh, back in the day when um, the Spanish uh, actually uh, invaded uh, the uh, the nation of Holland, uh, and uh, they um, began to uh, torture and and kill. They were trying to uh, get uh, the, the people of Holland had broken away uh, from <clears throat> from Spain uh, and away from uh, the the Catholic Church, and uh, they were there. They were. Um, again, uh, doing torturing, imprisoning, uh, all kinds of things, uh, had uh, burned them at the stake um, as a means of trying to bring uh, the people of Holland back under uh, control and get them to come back um, to uh, in, into Spanish control. Uh, there was one man who they arrested by the name of uh, John Herwin. And when they arrested him uh, and put him in the jail, um, he still refused to uh, to to bend. Uh, and like Paul and Silas, uh, he spent his time in the dungeon uh, singing. And people uh, would come uh, and stand outside of the dungeon to hear him sing. And so to stop that from happening. Uh, they decided uh, to uh, to kill him, and so they were uh, going to uh, going to burn him at the stake. And when they took him uh, and uh, tried to uh, tried to execute him, they had him uh, surrounded, and um, they began he began to sing even as they were executing him uh, the words to this song. And so I thought that was an, uh, a cool story uh, about this psalm. Uh, this psalm is one that uh, causes a lot of division in one sense, and that is uh, what it's about, uh, why David uh, wrote the psalm. Uh, even the superscription, it says uh, that it was sung uh, at the dedication of the house of David. Uh, there's question about what that means. Was uh, some say that uh, that was, it's a song that was sung when the temple was dedicated. Uh, some say um, that it was a that it was sung. Uh, the king of Tyre actually built David a house at one point uh, and built him a palace, and that it was sung at the dedication actually of the house of David. Uh, some believe it was sung. Uh, when uh, the Ark of the Covenant was brought back to Jerusalem. So there's a lot of debate uh, about what uh, and when uh, this psalm uh, was actually written. Uh, I think one of the most, uh, for me, I think the, the believable, the, the one that to me holds the most weight, um, is um, if you uh, go back and read, uh, you may remember that at one point David uh, being uh, feeling very proud of himself and uh, for what he had accomplished as king uh, of Israel, um, he um, did. Uh, he sent out a uh, basically a census. He decided uh, to count all the people. Uh, and so, long story. Uh, again, you can go back in Second uh, Samuel. Uh, 24, First Chronicles 21, and read about it. But he did this census, um, and um, he didn't pay the proper tax. Anyway, uh, God was angry uh, because of that, uh, and sent a a punishment, sent a um, an epidemic, a pandemic. Uh, I don't know the difference in the two. Uh, that ultimately uh, seventy thousand people. 
uh, died uh, as a result of it. And so uh, when, and when David saw that and he saw the people of Israel suffering uh, and he knew it was because of his sin, he asked God uh, to put, uh, put, the, uh, put the judgment on him. And then um, as uh, to spare, you know, the people of Israel who were innocent uh, and to put the punishment on, uh, on him. And so um, some believe that God actually did, did do that, that, he, uh, that God put the judgment on David uh, because uh, of that sin. And David became uh, very, uh, very ill. If you look in uh, verse 3, uh, it says, Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, and thou hast kept me alive. Uh, and so that, that um, uh, seems to be, um, uh, again, um, feasible and fit uh, the psalm that uh, David had been uh, suffering. And then um, he begins now uh, to praise the Lord uh, for uh, his ultimate um, healing uh, that uh, that came along. Uh, and so that's kind of the, again, there's a lot of different theories uh, about this psalm, but to me, um, when I take everything into account, that seems to be uh, the, um, the, 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 the best fit. Uh, and what we have again here is David uh, praising the Lord uh, for healing him uh, after going through uh, this time uh, of, uh, of judgment. Uh, so uh, kind of a lengthy introduction there, but uh, let's jump into the psalm real quick and, uh, and uh, start into these first few verses uh, of, uh, of this psalm. David says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. Uh, and so we learn from David's situation. He begins, first of all, uh, very simply, and, and I think most of us understand this, uh, he's praising God for, uh, for healing him, for delivering him. Um, and so uh, he's teaching us, again, the importance of, uh, of, uh, of praising God, again, of extolling, exalting uh, the Lord for, uh, for what uh, you have done. Um, and it doesn't show up as well uh, in the English, uh, in, the, in the King James as it's translated. Uh, but uh, basically what David says in verse 1 is, uh, I'm going to lift you up because you've lifted me up. Uh, and so, uh, you know, again, if that's the case, uh, if we lift God up for all the times he lifted us up, uh, certainly we'll spend a lot of time uh, giving him uh, praise and glory for all the times that, uh, that he lifts us up and rescues us uh, from various circumstances uh, of life. Again, we can see as we kind of get ahead of ourselves a little bit uh, in this psalm that uh, God has rescued David uh, from some uh, life-threatening uh, situation. David says, basically, you, you kept me alive. You, uh, you have uh, rescued me. And so uh, even uh, if I'm wrong about the exact setting, I think it's pretty clear um, that David at, at, this, uh, at this time had been um, at, as we might say, at death's door, uh, and God had delivered him. Uh, and in doing so, uh, he says, you have lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. Uh, and so David uh, says that, you know, what God has done here uh, is delivered me and not given my uh, my enemies uh, grounds, not given my enemies opportunity uh, to uh, to brag, uh, to rejoice uh, in my in my suffering. Uh, that uh, again, if if I'm correct here uh, in saying that it was uh, during this time after David's uh, census of the people, uh, again seventy thousand people uh, had uh, had died. Um, and so certainly there were probably a lot of folks who um, were, um, you know, 
upset with David, uh, but uh, David has uh, God has chosen uh, to uh, to forgive him, to heal him, and so he is uh, giving God the praise. O Lord, my God, in verse 2, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Uh, and so David, uh, again, he, whatever the exact situation is, um, David acknowledges that in the middle of his suffering, in the middle of his uh, problems, that, uh, that God had delivered him. One of the things uh, I want to point out to you here is, and we've talked about this a great deal uh, as uh, so far, um, and uh, the word of the Lord being all capitalized here in these first uh, few verses. Um, again, that's the name Jehovah. Uh, that is the, the personal uh, covenant name uh, of God. It is the name he made his covenant with people uh, of Israel. Uh, then you'll notice uh, in verse 2, the word God, uh, capital G, uh, and that uh, again is a name that shows that uh, that God is in charge. God is in control. Uh, that David is worshiping Him. Uh, it is uh, again here the name Elohim, uh, E L O H I M, uh, and uh, another one of the names uh, that God chooses to use. Uh, and that name is strong and, and powerful. Uh, uh, and so you get the idea of, um, again, it's kind of, I think, uh, ironic, again, that David got into this mess because of his pride uh, of counting the people and seeing how large a nation he had. Uh, and because of this, now he's been humbled and realizes and, and, and repeatedly here uh, is acknowledging, you know, no, Lord, I, you know, uh, I realize now that uh, you're you're the one who, who is in charge. You are the one uh, who is in power. Uh, that you, in verse three, you kept me from dying. You kept me alive. That I would not go down uh, into the pit. Whatever it was that uh, in, afflicted David, uh, David recognizes as being. Um, potentially deadly, uh, had it not been for the hand of God, uh, that um, he, he would have been dead. And he, he says that uh, you kept me from the grave, you, that I should not go down to the pit. Uh, you know, the phrase, um, you know, one foot on, you know, one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel comes to mind. Uh, and David says, you know, that's kind of where I was. And yet you reached out and you took, uh, took me by the hand. Uh, and so as we start into this psalm, uh, kind of what I'd uh, like for us to, to meditate on and think about a little bit as we look at those three verses, uh, again, is the number of times you, you, you may have not ever been uh, to the point, you may not realize it anyway, uh, to the point like David where, you know, David realized it. He knew he had almost been dead. Um, you know, I, I, you know, at my age now, I look back and I think of a lot of times um, in my younger life when I didn't realize uh, how close to dead I was, some of the, some of the dumb things that I did, uh, that it was nothing short of the hand of God uh, that reached down and, and, and intervened and protected me, protected me from myself most of the time, to be honest. Um, you know, sometimes we don't even realize it, but uh, to look back and to think. And so uh, my, my prayer for us today is that uh, we'll take these, uh, the thought of these three verses um, and, and realize and be reminded of all the times uh, that, that God has delivered us and, uh, and, and protected us. And uh, again, um, He's brought up my soul from the grave, kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Um, you know, every one of us, um, it, uh, you know, again, we may not, you may have never been, you know, uh, so sick you were in ICU. Some of you may have been. Uh, but, you know, every day we are surrounded by germs. Every day we get in our car and drive down the road. I mean, there are just so many times uh, during a day in, in a lifetime uh, that God has delivered us. And, and many of you, if you're honest, you're like me. Uh, you have to say he's delivered me not from the enemy. He's delivered me from myself. Uh, what is the saying? So, well, I've met the enemy and it is us. Uh, I have, you know, again, most of the danger I've been in has been of my own, own uh, ignorance. 
uh, and yet God chose uh, to, uh, to deliver me and to protect me. Uh, and so uh, my hope and prayer for us today as we consider these three verses as we start into this psalm uh, is that you'll take some time uh, and, and think about all the times and all the ways uh, that God has delivered you and, and protected you, uh, maybe even again like me, maybe from yourself, maybe from uh, some of you maybe have uh, may have been in situations where uh, through sickness or something you've been uh, at death's door, uh, but um, that, that God has uh, delivered and uh, and protected you uh, during that time. And I hope maybe you'll take a little time today. Uh, and spend a little time, as David says, extolling, exalting, praising the Lord uh, for what he has done. All right. You have a great day. We'll see you back here uh, first thing tomorrow morning.